Hello and welcome back. So continuing our discussion about the emergency medicine. In this video playlist, we will talk about the management of cardiac arrhythmias. And in this video, we will talk about the sinus arrhythmia. So commonly, there is some variation in the sinoatrial node discharge rate and normally it should be less than 120 milliseconds which equals three small squares in the ECG paper so less than three small squares between the longest and shortest P2P interval and sinus arrhythmia is when the variation exceeds the 120 milliseconds so on this ECG paper you see here we have a P wave right here and then we have another P wave right here and then another P wave right here. So you can see that the interval between this P wave and this P wave is longer than the interval between this P wave and the third P wave. And if we calculate the number of small squares, we can see that we have two here, then five, that's seven, then 12, 17, uh, 22, and then 27 and 28. So 28 small squares between the first P wave and the second P wave. And then we have four small squares here and plus five, so equals nine, then 14 and then uh, 19. So 28 small squares between the first and second P waves and then 19 small squares between the second and third P waves. So it's definitely more than three squares difference. And this means that we have sinus arrhythmia. Now the ECG characteristics of sinus arrhythmia include normal sinus P waves means the P wave is monoform. So all the P wave in the ECG paper have the same form and they are in pattern consistent with it originating from the sinus node. So all the P waves should be sinus P waves. And also there should be normal PR interval. The second ECG characteristic is one-to-one -one arteriovesicular conduction. So one-to-one -one AV conduction means for every P wave, we have an QRS complex. And the third characteristic is variation of at least 120 milliseconds between the shortest and the longest P2P interval. And on this ECG paper you see here, is for a 19 year old female and on the lowest part of the picture we have a strip given of the second lead and you can clearly appreciate some irregularity in the rhythm so on this p wave here and this p wave and then this p wave there is a huge difference in the interval between this p wave and this p wave and then this p wave and this p wave and this is sinus arrhythmia now also in sinus arrhythmia there is occasionally junctional escape beats that may be present during the long P2P interval. So if the P2P interval is too long, like you can see here, this is a P wave and then the other P wave is too long away, then we have a junctional escape beat like you can see here. This beat doesn't have a P wave or sometimes it has an inverted P wave, which means that this beat is junctional in origin and no treatment is required in sinus arrhythmia. Now sinus arrhythmias are affected primarily by respiration because during respiration there is intermittent vagus nerve activation which result in beat to beat variation in resting heart rate. Now sinus arrhythmia are commonly found in children and young adults and they disappear with advancing age and sinus arrhythmia indicates a good cardiovascular system health. Now sinus arrhythmia is an incidental finding on ECGs and rarely it may lead to symptoms like shortness of breath and palpitation. Now regarding the differential diagnosis, so if two or more P wave morphologies are present in the ECG paper, then arterial ectopy, wandering arterial pacemaker, or another competing non-sinus focus may be present. And this indicates a problem. And with that, we reached the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please give us a like, comment your ideas and questions, and subscribe. 
and if you want support more you can by joining the channel through the join button down or through the link in the description of this video